on the floor under the desk. Take the item out of the box and pop it onto the desk, and then please read, <laughs> then read the card. OK. I'm just going to sit you there, little guy. Are you talking to me? No. <laughs> right, this is Jeff. Every Thursday, our floor manager hides him somewhere on the set of This Morning for me and Philip to find during the show. The first one to spot him is the winner. Wow, Lee's team. What's oh. his name again? Jeff. Little Jeff. It's, hi it's hidden before the show, and yeah. you search him during the show. During the ad breaks, we have to find him. Oh, it's only during the breaks. It's never... Well, to be honest, depending on who I'm interviewing, sometimes I get a bit bored, I'll have a little look around and see if I can see Jeff. <laughs> You've interviewed me on this morning. <laughs> and I found him so fast that day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so who finds him the most, you or Philip? It's pretty even Stevens. We've been doing it for so long. And actually, I mean, I've been there 12 years and little Jeff is a lot older than that. Can we have a look at little Jeff? Yes. You let little Rob take little Jeff over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, say, I'll say this. I look huge next to Jeff. <laughs> Wow. Um, <laughs> Jeff is a very disturbing looking dog. Yeah, I know. It's Jeff like is the kind of thing film. you'd see in a horror film. Yeah. Can you face Jeff towards us? Ooh, Jeff's horrible. <laughs> Where's the most obscure place you found Jeff? Um, well, <laughs> one ticket. That, that's a question that you need context. <laughs> <laughs> the longest Jeff has gone missing was for two weeks. And we couldn't find on Jeff set. on set. We couldn't find Jeff anywhere. And there was a teapot on the shelves, and Jeff was squished inside the teapot. But the thing is, there must be times when you've accidentally found him no. whilst you're on air. Never. Never well, cropped Jeff up. Jeff has no. never ever made it on air. In fact, I had to get special sort of dispensation to get Jeff on telly today because he's a real this morning. Oh, he's not no. exclusive Secret. to ITV. <laughs> no. Because no. we couldn't get Philip Schofield. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, we tried. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> Series. That's all I meant. That's all I meant. <laughs> Holly, whenever I've been in the, um, yeah. that studio, yeah. there's hardly anything in there apart from where the presenters are. Yeah. It's just a bare, barren studio for the cameras to fall apart. No, there is loads in there. Well, not when I've been on it. Maybe they think I'm going to steal things. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. There's it's a good a point. Lot of places. Mm, it's like, a there's well, loads of shelves. Well, name there's some windows. I don't know that there's 12 years worth of places. <laughs> well, there's, there's lots of different cushions. There are yeah. repeat offenders, you know. Yeah, I mean, to be places. fair, we, we haven't got 15 years of guests. Sometimes we have to keep bringing people back. <laughs> 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 OK, so what are you going to say then? Angelica? I think it could be true. I've got the killer question, and I know the answer to this. Who is the most delighted when they find it, you or Philip? Me. I thought that is true then. Because <laughs> you look like the kind of person. Yes. <laughs> Where Philip would just sort of go, whatever. <laughs> I've got second hand cars to sell. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> we'll say it's true then, shall we? You're going to say it's true. OK, Holly. Little Jeff, uh, truth or lie? Well, little Jeff, what is it? It's a lie. Oh. <laughs> It once took me five and a half hours to cook macaroni cheese. <laughs> Please do. Is it homemade macaroni, as in you made the pasta? No. It was... <laughs> it was dried macaroni. How long does it take to boil macaroni? Ten it's minutes? It's not just boil it. It's, it's, there's, more to it. there's more to it than that. There's but a lot. There's a lot to making macaroni cheese. There's it's more, not just it, boil it. You have yeah. to... You know, uh, make a, a, a like a roux, which is like a, a white sauce. sauce mm. But it, 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 it's, yeah. be careful because it goes lumpy and. Five and well, well, you, you may be helping him out here, Joe. Oh, if, so, yeah. <laughs> this is like, how do you make macaroni cheese? You Joe? make a roux and, uh, <laughs> and it can go lumpy. And how would you make a roux? And don't say you had it off with a kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> we could have a little Joey, couldn't we? <laughs> That's good. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> Don't need your pity. <laughs> <laughs> I do a bit, but um, <clears throat> so well, I was following a recipe. So um, I remember it had four different types of cheese in it, but it got. Do you held... remember the types of cheese? Mozzarella. I not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me rephrase the question. Could you name any cheeses? <laughs> Was there a specific occasion? Was this for someone's birthday party or your birthday or...? We were on holiday. Who's we? It's my family and another family. 
And is it and your I job should... to cook for everybody? Not after that, no. <laughs> the whole thing got held up because somebody... Um, stole some of the cheese. Who took your cheese? Well, I can't remember who it was, but I do remember that actually at that stage I said I'm not doing the meal at all anymore. <laughs> so... Yeah, where, 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 where were you, Joe? Where did this happen? Uh, Cornwall. So somebody came and took one of the cheeses and you needed four cheeses. I had four and I had it all laid out because I like to get everything kind of meticulously ready. So sort of two hours in, all I'd really done was get all the ingredients into... I think I've seen too many cooking shows, so I like to have all the ingredients in all the special pots. All pre-weighed on a saucer all and all pre-weighed, yes. Yeah. But is anything being cooked at this point? Is the macaroni no. on? No, nothing, no. You haven't cooked anything. All you've done is lay out the ingredients. <laughs> but, well, yeah. Also, there was another delay, which was that I had to move the car, so... Was it in the kitchen? <laughs> no, it was part. It was, uh, it was blocking one of the neighbours... Um... Arteries. Drives or something, so I had to go move the car and then I couldn't find anywhere else to park because it was these like really, really narrow lanes. So I was just getting further and further and further away from where my family were. Why couldn't someone else park it? Because of insurance and you know, yeah, well, but no one would have seen you. You're in the middle of nowhere, they wouldn't have seen it, but you know, you can't muck around. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what, what are you thinking? I think it could be true, really. So I, I read something the other day, and this woman yeah. was complaining about her son. She said she asked him to empty the dishwasher, which yeah. is the one thing she asks him to do every day. And she timed him, and it took four and a half <laughs> hours. Yeah. And, and that was because he was just kind of teenagerish. At yeah. one point, apparently, he said, I've just got to go and have a rest. <laughs> so I think it's possible. Jo Joe strikes me as, as a man that's not, not in a rush. <laughs> I would like to be with him in a fire. <laughs> Bobby? Well, let's, lean, let's lean towards true. OK, well, say true. You're going to say it's true? OK. Yes. Uh, Joe, was that the truth or was it a lie? Well, it's true. Yes. Yes. Well, it's true. Joe did spend five and a half hours making macaroni cheese. On a dark winter's night, I once broke into the garden of the local witch's house and was shocked by what I found there. <laughs> <laughs> David Steve. OK, uh, uh, how... Uh, at what point... There's a lot of questions, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> at what point in your life did this happen? I'm going to guess somewhere between when I was 11 and 13. 12. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm going to say 12. And you say the local witch's house. What do you mean by that? Um, I mean, this is a, a very distant memory now. <laughs> OK. It was the house not very far from me where everyone, all the kids, said that the witch lived. And who did it, live there? Um, I don't know their name. Right. I'll call them Mary Candles. <laughs> It had, it had hedges at the front, you know, with, like, uncut hedges, a front, uh, a, a front gate covered with hedging, and it said on the, on the front gate, it said simply the words, no thanks. No, oh. really? So that's quite creepy, isn't it? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. You're, you started that with saying you were shocked by what you saw there. Yeah. Yes. What what did I, you... Yes, so shocked by what I found there. So what did you find there? I'm not comfortable with telling you that just yet. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not. This is going so far, it's got to be a lie, isn't it? Let me just say, it does not have to be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he says, however absurd, <laughs> it could still be true. <laughs> however <laughs> plausible, it could still be a lie. <laughs> it's just, uh, essentially, uh, what we are doing for this section is entirely futile. <laughs> <laughs> We will talk for a bit, then we will guess, then we'll and guess. then it will be over. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you come to, to go into this house? Who were you with? I was with, um, what was he called? <laughs> I was with Ken, Ken Numbers. <laughs> Ken I changed his name, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ronnie Calculator's son. The vibe is it's very unkempt, it's the gardening, because as we all know, Lee, yeah, 
Witches hate gardening, yeah. wizards hate plumbing. <laughs> right. yeah. so, so we knew it was a female residence. Right. right. Um, so you've like... never seen Mary Candles, oh. but you're only speculating it must be a witch rather than a wizard because it was an unkempt garden, unkempt garden. with no sign of deficient plumbing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, you know, we wanted to be the first people who said, no, we penetrated, you know, its boundaries. Yeah. We, we went um, into the front lawn, down a, a, a gate to the side, past the bins, past the back door, yeah? And yeah. then to the window where um, there was a light on, a big picture window, looked inside, and that's when we saw this extraordinary sight. Well, extraordinary to us as 12 year And what was it? What was it? You've got to say. <laughs> it was <laughs> a tiny, <laughs> tiny horse. <laughs> And the tele I'm not saying it was watching television, that was all that was in the room, was a tiny horse and a television on. <laughs> <laughs> I did get in the house. You got in the house? Yes, Mrs Candles came out. Right. Hey. Yes, and she said to me, you're one of the Mortimer boys, aren't you? <gasps> uh, Were you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Ken said... <laughs> and, um, and she said, would you like to come in and see the horse? <gasps> and she took us in, and it stank of paraffin. It was hot. That's horse. Hot, hot no, that was well, the house. The oh, I was thinking the horse stunk the of horse paraffin. The horse did stink, actually. Did he? Yeah. Of meat, hot meat. <laughs> <laughs> As we were looking at the horse, I always remember this. She came in, and she had a toilet seat in her hand, <laughs> and she said, "If I gave you some money, do you think you could mm. get rid of this for me?" <laughs> <laughs> What did you do with it? Mm -hmm. Just threw it in on our way home, just threw it somewhere else, I, I, I imagine. <laughs> did she say what the horse's name was? Max. Max? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. You'd have thought minimum. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, well, now, Suggs, what, what are you thinking about this? Oh. I mean, you know, it, it's so preposterous, but... David's flung me by saying this is the way he carries on anyway. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, same. I mean, but no, I'm saying lie, of course. You say it's, it's a, a lie. lie. It was when you said the horse smelt like hot meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you remember the detail of the paraffin heaters? Yes. Oh, oh yes. yes. We're talking 40, maybe 50 degrees there with those old... Um... 40 or 50 degrees <laughs> centigrade. <laughs> so we're talking like the temperature of the desert in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see Mary Candles again? No, never. Never mm. saw her again? Never saw her again. She probably melted in that heat. <laughs> What are you going to say, uh, then, David? Uh, do we think lie? I think it's a lie. I think it's a lie. I think it is a lie. All right, they're saying it's a lie. Now, we should bear in mind that when it comes to Bob, David has a very poor track record. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. see if he can be better tonight. Bob, yeah. truth or lie? I was telling the truth. No! <laughs> It's true. Bob really did break into a creepy garden. Right. An ex-boyfriend once dumped me after he found the list of pros and cons I'd made about him. Oh, my gosh. Please, T. How long had you been seeing this guy for? I'd been seeing him for about six months. And how did you meet him? I met him at Carnival. Right. Anything in Carnival just seems really excitable and nice. Yeah. And then when the sun's not shining and the calypso stops playing, you realise, OK, this is not as nice as I thought it was. So a six-month relationship that was good for one day. <laughs> yeah. Let's start with the positives. What, what was the pros about this guy? The pros was he was always on time. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's a guy to your right you're going to like. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good dancer. And he drove. I don't know, is he still single? Because he sounds great. <laughs> what about the cons? Commitment seemed to be an issue. When I was going through conversations of, you know, exes, it was, right. it was always very short-term. So he was good at getting there on time, but he didn't want to stay? This is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say in your statement that he found this list? Yeah. So talk us through that. Well, I mean, you could act it out. Just imagine, David, use your, your, your lovely acting skills. Yes. And you had bad credit as well. Bad credit, but I can drive. Yes. Yeah, but I can't no imagine this. <laughs> <laughs> what is this list? Firstly, your credit is bad, yeah. OK? okay? I've, I've had some money troubles, but at least I can dance and drive. <laughs> <laughs> Being able to dance 
heart and drive is not going to help for a longer relationship but, because you can't commit to anything. So you're going to wind up on me for two weeks and then wind up on somebody uh, else. And this is great. That. This is like a mashup of EastEnders and Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the truth is what you need. And I try to make subtle hints to you. This like... is a subtle hint. <laughs> this list <this. laughs> of pros and cons. It was a subtle hint. See attached sheet. It was a subtle hint. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I have to say now is I'm on David's side in this argument. <laughs> Come on, David, get your bags, you're coming with me. <laughs> Caroline, what are you thinking? No, I don't think it's true. You don't think it's true? John? Yeah, I think it is. You think it is? Who do I trust most of these two people? Sell it to me, John. I'm a terrible judge of character, I've got to say. <laughs> I won't lie. I was expecting a bit more positivity in that <laughs> argument. I'm going to go with Caroline. <laughs> All right, Judy, was it the truth or was it a lie? It was the lie. <laughs> 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 It's a lie. Judy didn't make a pros and cons list for her ex. David. To keep things exciting at home, every time I fill our tin with normal tea bags, I slip in one Earl Grey, <laughs> knowing it could surprise me at any time. <laughs> Please, Tim. Oh, it's for oh, your God. own interest, not for the surprise of your wife. <laughs> well, it could... I mean, she... She could be surprised by it also. Do you put a normal tea bag in with the old grey and let it brew or, or is it in no, the... No, no, it's, it's in the tin of tea in bags. In the tin? Okay. Yeah. Fill the tin of tea bags with normal tea bags, but with one Earl Grey tea bag in the mix, give it a little bit of a... <laughs> this is David's version of there an adrenaline go. sport. <laughs> it's so not it's... for the flavour. <laughs> Oh. It's for the surprise element. Does, that's it? Yeah. I'm, that's, I'm, I'm also, oh, it's as dull as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> what you've got to remember is I'm a, quite an uninteresting person and I've been doing this programme since 2006. <laughs> so, you know, th this is all we've got now. <laughs> <laughs> now, the question is, is when you yeah. sip it and it's Earl Grey, yeah. is it a pleasant surprise or damn? Because you obviously it's... don't like it, otherwise no, you would drink it. No, always... absolutely. Do you know what I think overall, and I'm sorry to make this even more boring than it is already, <laughs> but overall... Is it possible? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> overall, it, it is a neutral experience, because <laughs> I don't like the Earl Grey tea as much, and yet the surprise element <laughs> brings it up to the same level as a normal cup of tea. <laughs> 80 bags. Box of Earl Grey. You could probably work it out, Lee. Is that 80 weeks that you'll have to have that box of Earl Grey? How many cups of tea are you drinking a day? Oh, I mean, loads. F five to eight. It's a fact, right. so he's getting through a box of tea bags every ten yeah. days. Every ten yeah. days. Yeah. Takes Earl... a long time to get through a box of Earl Grey, although sometimes... The Earl Grey is, hang on, the Earl Grey's almost three years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the time you've yeah. got to the last Earl yeah. Grey. <laughs> and, and at no well, point, when you put oh, that... God, when you get after... You're interested now, aren't you? <laughs> For sheer age of it. I'm interested because old, David. Because at the end, when you put your last Earl Grey in yeah. and that box is empty, yeah. where most normal people would then go, that's probably enough. Yeah. You'll go, I think I'll go again. <laughs> <laughs> a new three year cycle. Oh, yeah. It's a three year thing, commitment the, each time. The thing you have to remember sometimes people come round to the house, and if you could believe that, you'll believe anything. Yeah. And, <laughs> but they don't ever leave. And ask, <laughs> and ask for Earl Grey. Yeah, oh, and now. then oh, I'm hello. willing, I'm just willing to take one from the Earl Grey yeah, box. but what if you've run out and it was your final <laughs> one in the thing? <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> it's disaster. <laughs> it's, it's never happened. But oh. Obviously, what a frantic and exciting scene. <laughs> <laughs> you said you're welcome to an Earl yeah. Grey, yeah. but you may you have, have to have to You find it! You must <laughs> have <laughs> to come to tea to find it. <laughs> no, you're not going to! <laughs> Tied to the radiator in the cellar. Let us go! <laughs> okay, time to decide, Lee. What are you going to say? I, I believe David is capable of doing this. He mm. needs that little thrill. <laughs> you, know, you know, I need excitement in my life. You need excitement, <laughs> but but this is a lot of. It's not exciting. It, it's... <laughs> You're saying it's a lie. Yeah. Uh, David, uh, it was, in fact, a lie. Oh. I taught my kids the alphabet by singing it to the EastEnders theme tune. 
Oh, we've got to hear it. <laughs> Jason's panicking now, cos he knows the EastEnders theme tune, but he doesn't know the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to ask you to do it just yet because Good. we can't win. If he does it badly, he might be bluffing. If he does it well... We could all try and do it together. Well, I mean, I've taught my children. I can teach you. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> it's just one note, one letter. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Lovely. No, 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 no. <laughs> not lovely. <laughs> Clapping, but that's not got a definite end. It does, you stopped it mid. And I don't that's know if you, I don't... how you learn the alphabet. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he didn't do that, You're did he? You're a better parent than I am, no. I might incorporate that. I've got a three-year-old who's, who's going through it at the moment. Okay. So, right. uh, Although we're doing it with Corrie. Trying to mix it, mix it up a little bit. You could do so. Cor Corrie for counting. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other things you put to theme tunes? Yeah, we do the periodic table elements to Doctor Who. He's <laughs> <laughs> standing us on in South Africa. No. Just get the box set and catch up. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a letter to a note. Because yeah. you could have gone A B C D F G. Yeah, but I wanted to make. I it... haven't finished. <laughs> H I J K. <laughs> Sophie, I don't want to put you in this invidious position, but mm -hmm. as a pop star, if you had to choose between one or the other, which would you go for? I did really enjoy it. Thanks us, very yeah. much. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Fair All right. Is it true? I don't know, Ooh. I was just thinking about you saying, who would you choose, me or Jason? I, thought, <laughs> I can't help thinking she'd be swiping left for both. I can't help thinking she'd be swiping right for both. I don't know which way around it is, but you can use that in the edit. <laughs> I think it's not true. Sophie? I'm going to say it's a lie. Yeah. I think it's a lie. Jason, truth or lie? It is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's a lie Jason didn't teach his kids the alphabet using the EastEnders feet. I once did a parachute jump just because I fancied the instructor. <laughs> <laughs> David Steve, mm. um, wh when was this? Um, it was in the 70s. So how did you meet this instructor that you fancied? Oh, because um, a family member... Um, was um, a, t a skydiver. And in the process of watching him skydive, I met the instructor and felt an immediate magnetic attraction. <laughs> so this I mean, this I thought is... you were going to say I fell for him. <laughs> I, I did, but I'm a poet, you know, so I like to embellish. Oh, that's true. I, I just like to go for little puns. Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> fell for him. I fell for him. Oh, I see, I got sorry, dear. Sorry, I'm not used to you, you see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Describe him to us then. What was it about this man that was yeah, so attractive? He, he wore a lot of straps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. All right. And what is it about a man in straps that you like? Well, right. I don't know. There's something sort of dark about straps. I don't know. You know, he had these, <laughs> he had these straps and the sort of... Uh, so it... around the groins and everything, and he did, he did it. Whoa. I wasn't expecting this, Pam, I'll be very honest. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you recall his name, Pam? Yeah, Doug. <laughs> Doug, Doug. This is the veil of the white horse accent of which I'm exceedingly proud. <laughs> so how did you take it a step further? Well, with I, him? I volunteered to learn how to parachute jump. Mm, yeah. yeah. And did you have to have straps as well? Oh, indeed, I did. Mm. Are you strapped to Doug as well? Because I've done this. No. And they, well, you, you're on the front. Well, I was like no, a little no, baby I've... in a papoose. Oh no, this was none of that. No, Lee, it was lovely. I've never felt so safe. <laughs> <laughs> which way were you facing? Or oh, facing oh, away. All right. <laughs> So, Listen, this is for wimps, this is for wimps. This I did alone. <gasps> you weren't strapped to Doug. No, I you... wasn't not strapped to Doug. I would have thought that would have been the whole point. I well, know, <laughs> but I didn't find out until he hit me on the shoulder and said, go. <laughs> <laughs> the old romantic. <laughs> so what's the time scale of this? There's the day you go with a family member who's a skydiver. 
what was your plan that day, that you were just going to go up in the aeroplane that your family no, member was going to jump out of? I wasn't going to go up in the aeroplane. I was just going to go and uh, watch. And then I noticed the instructor reclining in the hangar, looking steamy. <laughs> did you... Did you, <laughs> <laughs> did, you uh, did you talk to him much? Yeah, I did. I said, um, how do you get into this line of business? Nice! <laughs> With the, the classic head wobble of seduction. <laughs> Did you have lessons with Doug? Yeah. Oh, tell us about those. Was he a West Country person? No, where he was wasn't. He from? I don't know where it came from. Well, what was his voice? Oh, it was received English. It was one of these. Now, you listen yeah. to me, Ayers. That's right. Let me just tighten this strap. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this one. That's better. <laughs> Let's stop the blood. Now. He didn't. He didn't say anything <laughs> lascivious like that. He was a perfect gentleman with beautiful received English, and he said, "I think you're going to enjoy this." <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, your heart was a flutter at that, isn't it? Hey? <laughs> All right, so what are we thinking? Richard, what do you think of this? Uh, it, sounds, it sounds reasonable to me. At first, I didn't believe it, but you were going, look, this is just a thing that happened. Like, you just wanted to get your story out. So what's it going to be, David? That's definitely true. Yeah. There's no doubt in your no mind. No doubt in my mind. I can, I can picture it entirely. All right, they're saying it's true. <laughs> so, Pam, was it true or was it a lie? My story was true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. Pam did a parachute jump just because she fancied the instructor.